here we go, my nerdy friends. This is the platform for our uh, refrigerator. Now, we, uh, we're taking a chance that we're installing a normal household refrigerator. It's not a very big one, but it is still one for a house. Uh, it runs on 120. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know, what was it, 17 cubic feet? I don't know what it is. It's a refrigerator for a house. And that's because we like to eat. But there's four grown-ass adults. So what we're doing is we're raising it up to give the bottom a little more airflow because uh, a lot of these, especially this one right here, this household refrigerator, only has about this much space. It's like less than an inch for airflow. Um, and I want it to have lots of airflow. I want it to be cool. I don't want it to overheat at all because the cooler it stays, the uh, more efficient it will remain, hopefully. We're already stressing it out by having it in an environment where it's going to be shaking and moving around, uh, which may turn out to be a complete waste of time and money. Um, we bought the refrigerator out of them big box stores. Uh, probably the blue one. I tend to get my uh, my appliances from the blue ones. Uh, you can buy extra warranties from them, things like that. You can get that anywhere. Though. I think they sell the same stuff everybody else sells. But what we did here is we cut these pieces. They're the right size for the base underneath it. This is essentially pieces of three-quarter inch plywood. We're going to laminate them together with glue. We're going to glue and screw some more. <laughs> yes, my wife's back there going, yay! She likes, the, she likes making squirrelies. Um, she's like the artist. Um, I'm the autist, she's the artist. Woo, bright light. Sun coming out. Oh, nice though. Feels good. I'm going to borrow my sunglasses. No, <laughs> I'm good. I'm too cool for school. Uh, here. So this is basically a stack. Now the benefit in it being four inches wide, it doesn't actually need four inches wide, but that adds stability. Because we're going to glue and screw the heck out of this all the way down, the entire base basically becomes a, well, essentially a four by four piece of wood um, that we've cut to the sizes we want, milled it, and are gluing and screwing it. Now, I don't know if you can see these, but on this side down here, there's a hole right here. This hole breaks in half. There's a divider right here. And this divider is movable. We haven't set the distance yet. Because underneath the refrigerator, uh, I noticed a small piece of cheap plastic. It's very thin. It's the uh, it's size of a, I don't know, maybe it's like a 5 mil. It's a very thin piece of plastic and it's transparent. I think the way it's, because it's screwed in there like it's supposed to be there. It's not part of packaging or shipping. I think it has something to do with allowing airflow to move in a direction. Okay. But I'm not an, um, a fridge engineer. So I, I, I don't know. I'm going to assume it needs to be there. So the, this big pocket under here, we are building up a wall to meet that piece of plastic, this. Now it's skinnier here, and the only reason we got the thicker ones, um, see it's this skinny underneath it, just to out, add for airflow. The only reason we, we're putting this thicker one here is because I want that piece of plastic, if it moves a little, to stay in contact, to keep that airflow going in whichever direction it thinks it should go. So basically, we're we're adding additional airspace by doing this. Uh, it raises the fridge up about three or four inches, and well, let's see, two, four, three inches because it's uh, four layers of three quarter inch. That's that's uh, what is that? Three inch and a half, an inch and a half, three inches? Yeah, something like that. So we're gonna turn that off. We're gonna go inside, and you're gonna watch this glue and screw. Stay nerdy. Let's do it inside. Okay, my nerdy friends, this is the black wall. Um, this is where the refrigerator is going. Uh, we painted it black because the refrigerator is black. The refrigerator is going to be in a 
a box of sorts and <clears throat> we wanted to protect the walls from moisture and whatnot because it is a refrigerator at the same time um, we wanted it to basically not be that noticeable the outline of the wall so we said well, let's just paint it the same color as the refrigerator and it won't be as noticeable so when you look back there it just looked like refrigerator black we are I've looked up some wires today <clears throat> so this is a double gang box but it doesn't need I don't need two receptacles back there so I'm not going to put a receptacle in it just put a receptacle an extra one in there I'm just going to put the one receptacle but I want to double gang boxes because well they're bigger it gives me gives me more room for all the wires I got to run instead of trying to fight with it for anybody who's ever worked with wires you know darn well it's a uh, well, it's a pain to work in those little boxes, those little bitty ones. Yeah, it's just kind of a pain in the tush. So, turn this a little bit this way. So, that's what we're going to do. Also, all the little things come with these little bitty screws. Is it little screw? Um, that's pretty much the standard. That's what comes with pretty much everything you're going to buy out there. We went ahead when we went to one of the biggest big box stores and we purchased a slightly larger screw. If I can get it open. Now these are over in the screwed area. You can see the size difference. See the big one? That's the new one. And then that little bitty one, that one right there, that's the little one. Now these will let us get a little deeper in there because we have this three quarter inch wood also. Um, so we bought these if we need them. We may not need them. But you never know. Two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, I don't know what it was. Three hundred, maybe maybe five bucks, I have no idea. We also couldn't find a uh, a double gain box cover that would only have one receptacle but the receptacle had to be on the side because my my connections are on the sides they're not in the I don't it doesn't this is the one of those types that has it where you can put all kinds of fancy ones on the front um, so we found one of these and we found one of these this slides in this and makes that disappear that little white spot there that's a little space that's a, just a little filler it's this right here that slides in there that screws in and that basically makes it now I don't care that it's white it's going to be on the refrigerator I could care less but then you just take two two little screws and you hold it in now I'm going to use the baby screws that came with the uh, the other face cover uh, because the screws that came with that were really long but I don't want those. You find me a little. That is not a little one. Little. That'll work. It's a little flathead. <clears throat> See, now it's in. Doesn't go in very easily though. Those uh, that plastic did not want to give way, which is good because it means it's not going to come off. So, so I think I kind of felt like I was threading it, but that's cool. And of course, a uh, black receptacle. But the next step is identifying which wire we want to use. In here. Now, generally speaking, I'm going to use the white in this in this uh, this box as neutral, as the return. Now, all the boxes are grounded, so if, if the device requires a grounding on top of the neutral then we'll just ground it right to the box because the boxes are attached to some uh, uh, conduit and the conduit itself is bolted slash um, attached to the ribs of the bus the structure of the bus thus attaching it to the chassis and so forth and so on so if we're going to use white as ground I'll need that 
and then we've got to decide which one of these we want to use for the refrigerator. Colors. We've got four colors to choose from. So what happens is the wire from here, going in that direction, where the uh, box is going to be, uh, the, the same rest of the wire that's going that way, I can use for something else. Possibly. Or I may just have to pull it out of there. But I don't plan on really putting anything else on that refrigerator line, although we could just to have it on it, but it's not really necessary. We're having a receptacle or a, uh, what we might do is, no, we're going to put the refrigerator on its own because I want to be able to turn the refrigerator off. So we're going to use, uh, let's see, oh uh, no, my brain keeps going to red, let's use red. Okay, so what we need to do is I'm going to wire this to here, it's got to come over here, then I'll put a switch from there, from this box coming up into here. So we will use red at this point. So where is my my clippers? These are uh, solder and seal connectors. Heat shrink has that soldering and stuff in the middle of it too. A little hard to see because my camera won't focus. Let's get the idea. Receptor. The gist of it is the neutral, the return, pretty much the side the ground is on. But make sure you do a couple things. One is turn it upside down and read it right there. Really fine print. It's a like white wire in a house. That's your neutral. That's, that's what you bring back. Uh, vehicles are a little different. Sometimes they use um, black wires in a lot of vehicles and things like that. So just be conscious of what you're putting on where. Uh, I haven't I've said it already. Uh, this is a not how-to video. This is a yeah, this is a not how-to video. This is a what we did video. So I am, I'm not an electrician. I, I know enough, just enough about it to make my get myself in trouble. Just to get me in trouble. If I was a rich man. So I'm going to take off one of these white ones. I'll unscrew the nut completely. See if I can get that ring connector to go on it. If I was a rich man. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, let me explain what I just did. So if the electrician's out there going, No! You guys can, uh, I can always change this if I, we get enough feedback saying this is a really bad idea. My choices are use this one, which this is for a uh, 14 to 16 gauge wire. Uh, it, it'll work, uh, it fits. Or trim it down. It used to be that shape right there. I know this is not focusing, I apologize. Right there. That's the shape it used to be. All I did was just kind of cut off the sides. When I do that, it will fit in there. Nicely. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Basically just trimming it down. Get a nice fit with the one that holds all the wires in it. Um, I believe that should be okay. I'm going to trim that little spot right there. Just a little bitty baby spot. And as I said before, this is a what we did video, not a how to video. So, if you have any doubts at all, do not do what we're doing. Figure it out for yourself, make your own decisions. Be a grown ass adult, you got to decide for yourself. Because I'm not going to blame anybody. Make sure that's snug. Snug, snug, snug. Oh, yeah, good and tight. It's going to survive those Yukon roads. That's it. Fits nice and, nice and pretty. And then we attach this end to those, which I'm actually going to shorten it. That's too much wire. Don't need that much.
attach, hopefully, it's not too small, that screw in the back of the box, hopefully. I can find a spot that will let it go. We're going to do this next. Um, mostly because it'll be a pain in the ass to do once the uh, once the receptacle's in the way. Uh, we got a new one of these. Got it at the Wally World place. It's kind of a shot in the dark, but it was like sixty-five dollars. It's an impact. Um, and then he had a $7 two-year in-house warranty, so if it breaks, you take it back to Walmart. Uh, I realize that Walmarts are going to be hard to find. Not. But that's why I did it. Uh, one was basically $25 cheaper than everybody else. Um, well, yeah, the, the 7 bucks is like, I guess, 20 bucks cheaper, I don't know, than everybody else. Um, and I'll always be able to find a Walmart within that two-year time frame to replace it if it goes bad. So I decided that, well, if it goes bad, it won't matter. I need a spot. Any electrician types, you let me know if cutting that is some kind of a, oh my god, because I can always change it. Um, as soon as I find, there it is. This. I couldn't find, and yeah, probably mostly ignorance, I couldn't find one of these zinc connectors that was uh, heat shrink that uh, that would fit in there that was also sized for a 12 gauge wire. Because that's what my wires are, these are 12 gauge. But I really wanted to use the stranded 12 gauge. Now this is also is the, the thicker, uh, there was a THHN or something. Stuff that's designed for uh, oil and stuff like kind of resistant, which I don't really need in here, but since I bought like, I don't know, 1,200 feet of it, or uh, actually 3,000 feet of this stuff, different colors. Um, that's what we're gonna go with. So that goes there. These. I don't need all that excess, excess space there. Not in this box. So what we're gonna do is pull from the boxes right near me over here, some of that slack out of the way. And if I do, I can just tug it back in there. I'll leave a tiny bit of slack, it's not a lot. Push that back there. Got this red one here. Um, I'm going to cap it with some tape because it's just going to float back there and I don't know if I ever actually use it but if I do I'll, uh, I will want it to uh, be protected I don't want the, the loose end floating around hitting things Put a little bit of green tape on it. I didn't pick green, it's just one that's cool. the one that came to my hand when I reached into that dark bag over there. My bag of holding. Okay, that goes there. Well, it's not green by any design.
the Jester fiber into a receptacles. Now this one's sideways. Um, it, it's not a big deal because nobody's ever going to see it. Never going to be used. Uh, personally, I would have rather I turned it this way, but I didn't think about that when we installed the boxes. So, eh, just is what it is now. Go. Hi. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so my nerds. That's our refrigerator. We're gonna slide it back in our puka back here. Um, that's the thing we built up. You can see these big open voids. There's an opening down there that lets additional air flow in. There's an opening in the back that lets additional air flow in. There is coming on the back wall. We have built these to keep it off the back wall. It keeps it off the back wall about two inches for additional airflow. Um, and there's one over here. But also on the side here, we put weather stripping. This is a half inch by half inch. Uh, the big Amazon people. It's just basic weather stripping you put on a car or something like that. We ran strips down both sides in the back and then on both sides at the top. Okay, this is going to act like uh, basically a shock absorber when we're driving around. So with all the vibrations, we're going to push it up against this. The two, the two, these, what's left of these two by threes, that sits against them, and that will act like a shock shock absorber. Um, we're going to get some more of this stuff, and we'll put something on top. And between all those pieces and a few other things we're going to do, it's going to keep it from from bouncing and vibrating too much and damaging this. At the same time, hopefully get lots of ventilation for it. So in short. We added extra space at the bottom, the back, and the top. We put some weather stripping on the on the sides at the top to act like a shock absorber sideways. We're in, and then we got them in the back. And we're going to do some on top, and that will push it down in. So it should be solid and ready for the Yukon. We're going gold rushing. Or something like that. So stay nerdy, my friends.